All right, welcome back to Real Talk. So now I'm gonna talk about how to learn German. So a lot of my videos have been how to learn English for German speakers, but I really feel more drawn towards teaching what I learned instead of going backwards. So yeah, I don't know if you're more of a English speaker or English, if you're an English learner, the next few videos are mostly all for German learners. So if you're British or Australian or English, wait, English, British, same thing. If you're Welsh or if you're American and you want to learn German. So this is the first book that I ever got. If you're American, you can get this at Barnes and Noble. At least you could in 2015 when I started learning German. And I want to just kind of use this as my guide and start in chapter one. So the title of this book is Easy German Step by Step if you want to follow along. Um, and the first chapter, and I agree with this, it's the most important thing you need to start with is pronunciation. Chapter one is pronunciation and cognates. So the German alphabet is very similar, fortunately, to English. You might say, well, uh, not really. There are letters in the German alphabet that don't exist in the English alphabet. Well, yeah, it's a bit different, but uh, think of Chinese. Think of Arabic, it's pretty similar. So the different letters, just to get that out of the way, there's a special S character, which kind of looks like a B, and all it does is symbolize two S's in a row. And you might say, why don't you just write two S's in a row? The short answer is, then you would often have three S's in a row. <laughs> because in German, um, a noun, will be combined with another noun. So if I were to say like a start line, that could be a one word in English, I'm not sure. But the or the starting line or the start finish line, um, that's always gonna be combined. So if you end up with like two S's on the end of a letter or the end of a word, and then the first letter of the next word is an S, then you have three S's in a row. So it, it, does, it does have a good practicality there. The double S, it's called doppel S. Or it could be also called Schaff S, or <laughs> could also be called S Z. So those are the three names for this character. And then there are three vowels with dots over them, and those are called the umlauts. And umlaut is um, it's that letter that you see, but as if it were in a combination with the letter E. And actually, because there have been restrictions in the past, for example, on signage or um, in computers. For a while, the umlauts were kind of tricky and sometimes they still cause problems in Microsoft because Microsoft's stupid uh, or like in databases. You would just write it A-E instead of A with two dots. So umlaut A e, or umlaut A. You would never say that. You say A, e, U or U e, and um, if you really break it down and try and say ah with and then go ah and eh, so the two letters a and e, and you do that over and over again, eventually you'll hear it meld in your own mouth. Ah eh, 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 and that's the sound. So it's that letter with an e. But basically, yeah, the the alphabet's very similar. And I don't want to start with the umlauts. I really just want to start with the alphabet because there is a huge similarity. And if you use, that's the other part of this first chapter of this book, cognates. So pronunciation and cognates, chapter one. Remember the book is Easy German Step-by-Step Step by Ed Swick, if you wanna follow along. Cognates are words that are the same, or at least they look the same, or at least they're pretty similar <laughs> from one language to another, and they have the same meaning. Um, and if you use these, especially if they're the exact same pronunciation, uh, sorry, if they're the exact same spelling, that really helps you to practice pronunciation because you can just look at the word, you know the meaning, you recognize the word on the paper, and now you're just saying it differently. So, okay, so yeah. It's good to start with pronunciation, it's good to start with cognates, and it's good to realize a lot of the pronunciation along the whole alphabet is the same. Of course, there are three vowels that you've never seen in English, and there's the one 
consonant, the doppel S, S, Z, scharf S. Um, that's really the only foreign looking stuff you'll see in the alphabet. It's not like um, there are accent marks. There are no accent marks like in Spanish. You know, like cafe has that accent on the E. Uh, whoever knows what that means. I have no idea. I don't do Spanish, don't do French, but I do German. And um, let's go through the alphabet. And we'll do the alphabet song because... I find that personally very helpful when learning the alphabet. I know it's childish. And uh, when I first asked my wife to like teach me that song because she's German and she pretty much started me off on German learning, she was like, we don't do that. <laughs> but the alphabet song is pretty helpful. Um, yeah, we'll get there though. We'll start with the letter A. <laughs> we'll start at the beginning. For whatever reason, the beginning is A. <laughs> no one knows the reason the alphabet is in the order it is. If you know, please leave a comment down below. And uh, don't forget to smash the like button if you do like this content because, well, it helps that you, you're just helping me out. You're really just helping me get this teaching out to more people. Sure, there are other YouTube channels teaching German, but they're not me. And uh, if you like this, hit the like and you show YouTube you like it and other people will like it. And of course, a lot of people are gonna like it because how could you not like this video? But anyway. A, B, C. Feel free to speak along. A, B, C. So those are real similar. So the biggest difference you see there is C. That's A, B, C. A, B, C. It's not C, it's C. C is pronounced T. Yeah, we'll get into that later. I mean, it's not really that big of a deal at the moment. Day, A, F. Hey, F, that's almost exactly the same. Um, F, F. The only difference I find is I say it a little bit deeper in German and it's typical in German that um, my voice is definitely deeper. Uh, there's just like almost like an octave difference. So, A, B, C, D. That's kind of how I speak. I'm like, uh, uh, I'm a lot deeper in my throat. A, B, C, D, A, F. Um, and you notice instead of A and B, it's A and B. And C, no, it's C, D, A, F, G. That's G. G, H, E, J. Yot's a bit of a tricky one. Got to remember yot. That's J because J is a soft E, E sound. Um, Yasmin. That's my wife's name. Yasmin. And ya, ya, ya. That's yes, ya. So J is basically what you usually see as Y in English. So yes, spelled with a Y. Ya, spelled with a J. Same meaning, of course. A lot of times in English you say ya, 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 sure, sure, sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Same in German. Yeah. Okay, so J, K, L, M, N, O, P. So a couple of little tiny differences there. If you look at the L, L, that's the German one compared to L. That tongue is just in a different spot in the roof of the mouth. Move your tongue back a little bit and you'll feel that German sound or feel that German feel. L, and make the German sound. L, M, N, not very different at all. O, O, that is deeper. It's wider. You're, how do I do it in English? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, O, 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 O. See that? P, Q, Q is Q, Q, R, R, that's a, that's, that's a bit, that's probably the hardest one. R, how do you make that sound? You have to push up from your stomach. R, R, it's all the way back there. R, it's way, way back. It's not the tip of your tongue, it's the opposite. R, and if you don't have support in the stomach, it's not gonna make the noise. R, because if you, you just keep your stomach totally relaxed and try and do it, that's what you get. You gotta push in with the stomach. Err, err. 
Okay, that's definitely hard. So, Q R S T U V V. That's an F sound instead of a V. It's F. So, V V V V V V V. It's car company V V. So V. It's not W. It's not W. There is no W anywhere in in, uh, in German. But the Germans do know this sound from the from English, from their English lesson. So, no, it's v, v. What's the difference between V and V? You can see it's a little bit more like this for the W, whereas the V is more like this. V, v. I'll give you the zoom. I'll give you the zoom for that. That's, that's a very subtle difference. V, v. That's the V. v. And here's the W. Hold on. V, V, V. V, V, V. Gustav. And it's actually an F sound anyway. Gustav. Gustav. Whereas W, V, V. Can't think of a name right now. V. Then is there is there a name that starts with W? Wechselhaft. Das Wetter ist wechselhaft. I think I almost zoomed out too far there. So I now have to check. What is the next letter in the alphabet? <laughs> X. 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 Instead of X, it's X. Not too different. And Y is Y. That's the Greek word or Greek name for it. You know, like Alpha Delta, Beta Thamma. Is Thamma one? No, probably not. Gamma, Theta, um, Y. Y. That's a word, basically. Y. And Z. 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 So in English, we say Z. In England, you say Z. And in German, you say Z. It starts with a T at the beginning, just like the word for C. Tset or tse, tse. This is something you definitely got to watch out for. Let's see if there's a good example of that one. So what's a good word? Oh, so one good word for that is tselle, tselle. Um, that's the word for cell, tselle. And what do they have for C? Oh, no. They don't have a sound that's like that. Tss, tss. So, um, zwei, that's the number two. We we'll probably do the numbers soon too, but we'll, I guess we'll do that in chapter two. Um, but zwei, zwei. So that's two letters right there. And that's a totally, it should be a super, super easy word. But it's a totally difficult word for Americans because we're going to say zwei. We're going to say at the best say zwei. No, we'll say zwei, zwei. Don't say that Americans. Say tz, tz. And remember where that W is. You can rewind to that. You'll see where it is just look for where my mouth is zoomed in on. Zwei, 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 zwei. So you're just kind of like dragging your lips right over the bottom of your teeth, zwei. And the beginning of the Z is a tz. And m most Americans mispronounce it. The, the best pronunciation most Americans have on it is the EI. EI is I, very similar to I. Um, so you'll hear zwei, zwei. You can't speak that way. It's, it makes it more difficult to pronounce. So you're giving yourself a harder time by actually using the wrong sound. You think maybe, oh yeah, well, I'm not going to put in that much effort. It's, you know, I'm only here for three weeks, but, um, it's more difficult for you to just try and use the easier familiar sound because you can't do zv, zv. But you can do tsf, tsf, tsf. It's possible, you know. Anyway, so that's the alphabet. A, B, C, D. Let's see if I can even sing, man. I can't sing. All right. It's A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, V, X, und Y, und Z. Jetzt kennst du das Alphabet. 
nächstes Mal singst du mit. Okay. I added that last part. The last part, because, uh, well, at least I think I did. Because as far as I learned, it was A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, and Y, and Z. Jetzt kennst du das Alphabet. But I added the part, you know, because that's now you know the alphabet. Wait, how does it go in English? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, G, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Next time, won't you sing with me? Yeah, next time, won't you sing with me wasn't on there. So, jetzt kennst du das Alphabet. Next is my sings du mit. <clears throat> um, right on. So, that's, that's the alphabet. And knowing how to pronounce the names of the letters really helps you with your pronunciation in general. So we could dive into every letter, but as I went through there, I already covered most of the biggest, um, you know, stumbling points. Like you're not gonna mess up the letter P too badly, you know? But um, there are tricks to, let's see if there's any, I, he definitely has some good stuff in here. So like uh, the letter B is pretty, pretty much the same, if you see the word boat, that's boat, you know, b -b. but if it comes at the end of a word, and this is a common theme, you won't say the b, you'll say it like a p, you'll say p. Um, and there's a good example here, I'm sure. So boat, yeah. And at the end of a word, cob, that's a basket, cob, 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 gip, gip me a. Give, gip, gip me a. <clears throat> Sounds more like a P. But it might be somewhere halfway between a P and a P. Yeah, the word for, yeah, yeah, it's a P basically at the end. And it's the same with, say, uh, V and F. You see that a lot. F is pronounced like F, but V might also be pronounced like F. Like if it's at the end of a word, Gustav, instead of Gustav. Um... K is that way too. Where's K? Oh yeah, no, it's G. So G is the voiced syllable or the voiced phonetic sound for um, the same sound as K. So if you don't know what that means, uh, there's like always a voiced and unvoiced sound. So if you look at TH, you got TH and TH. And if you look at V and F, they're actually the same sound. They're the same shape you make with your mouth. One is voiced. Th, one is not voiced. Th. Same with S and Z. S and Z. S, Z. You don't move your teeth. You don't move your tongue. All you do is engage your vocal cords or not. And so that's the difference between a voiced and unvoiced. And G and K are the same way. So if you look at um, here's a good example because it's a G at the beginning and a G at the end. So it's good day. The word for day is talk, but it's spelled T-A-G, talk. And when you say good day, you say guten, guten would be good for a good day. Guten talk, guten talk, guten talk. You hear the gu, 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 guten talk ends in a K sound, guten Tag. And that is very important because it's gonna make it easier for you to pronounce it correctly. I mean, there's nothing technically wrong with saying guten Tag, but it's going to make it more difficult for you to pronounce the next word, probably. You know, I guess in that sentence, it's probably the last word you're gonna say. But generally, if you're Making a mistake like that, even if it's like not incorrect, but you're just giving away effort for no reason on some pronunciation of something. Like uh, a lot of times, just the last two letters of the words in German are often E-N. E-N is the most common ending. So if you say like, uh, geben, geben means to give, geben, and you pronounce that E-N extremely enunciatedly, it's just gonna cost you effort and you're not gonna get to the next word as easily. Um, you hear Germans say geben. They swallow the E-N. It's just like closed. It 
it gets cut off by their lips, Gaben. Um, so then you just come to the next word in the sentence more easily. You have more time to just get your mouth in position for the next word. So that's the kind of thing, like you can give away that. Um, gib, gib me a, or gib me a, it's a little more effort for you to say gib than gib, or ta, g, than talk. So it's common to unvoice that last um, consonant in a verb, uh, in any word actually, sorry, not just verbs. So I think those are, that's, honestly, that's most of it, dude. You, you are well on your way. M, N, you're not going to have any issues there. G, like I said, voiced or unvoiced is what you got to pay attention to. B, same deal. J, is sounds like a Y. We've all seen that before. I mean, that's nothing special. L, 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 hallo, hallo, hallo. How are you possibly still here? It's such a long video. But um, you're learning. Of course, you're here. Hallo. Uh, so yeah, I mean that's a common word. A lot of Americans say hello, 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 hello. No, the L is not behind your teeth. It's in the middle of your top of the roof of your palate, top of the roof of your mouth. Hello, 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 and it's a different. Um, it's a little slightly different tonality compared to, like, if you pick up the phone in America, you go hello, hello. <laughs> in German, it's hello, hello. Goes back now. So hello. Hello. So, all right. Let's talk about the vowels and then do a couple con cognates and then move on to the next chapter next time. So, the vowels. A, A, E, O, U. Those are the vowels. A, E, I, O, U. A, E, <laughs> A, 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 E, O, U. Ooh. Just like in English, E is the most common letter in the entire language, as Sherlock Holmes rightly points out. E is very common. So E is the most common letter in the... It's A. A. N. You hear N a lot. A. A. And the first umlaut letter is A. And that sounds pretty similar to A. A. Gaben, eh, eh, that's the E. But eh is a little bit different. They're similar, and the word for similar is ähnlich, ähnlich, eh, but it's not quite the same. So, like, um, one of the little German quippy little things you might say, like, coulda, shoulda, woulda, you know, coulda, shoulda, woulda in English. You might say, hätte, hätte, Fahrradkette. No idea why, but <laughs> it means. Could have, could have. <laughs> bike chain. <laughs> could have, could have bike chain. Um, I've never translated that before. I mean, it doesn't sound as funny in German now that I've translated. It sounds pretty ridiculous, but <laughs> could have, could have bike chain. Hätte, hätte, Fahrradkette. Uh, basically means could have, should have, would have. Wouldn't try and translate it like could have, could have bike chain. <laughs> that's pretty good, man. Could have, could have bike chain. Um, it, no, it's coulda, shoulda, woulda. Hete, hete, farad, kete. What's the difference between hete and kete? It's more in your nose. The E is in your nose. So, hete and kete. Kete. It's much shorter. And that's the, that's one of the things. Like, this is a diphthong. Diphthong is anytime you see two, uh, two vowels together. Two vowels together is a diphthong. And two vowels together signifies that you are actually changing position in your mouth while you're saying that. Um, for some reason, the thing that's coming to mind right now is actually the word I in uh, British English. I'm not sure if it's a diphthong in American English, but it's such a contradiction because it's only one letter. So like the British say, I or something. I don't know. So it changes. Let me think of a two letter one in English. Um, oh, I can't think of one right now. Uh, a diphthong, diphthong. Thailand. Thai. I. 
I changes, right? Thailand, Thai. And so if you look at the umlauts as diphthongs, even though you only see one letter, you know it's an A-E. So it has to go A. Ah, and you can't do that in as short of a time as you can say just the letter E, eh. You can't do an umlaut like that, eh. <laughs> it would be like that. So you hear it's got a little higher pitch in the nose, eh, <laughs> eh, 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 compared to eh, eh. I mean, it's, it's kind of subtle, but it's easier to tell when you do a long one. So the best way to learn the umlaut, to my opinion, is, is the letter U. So if you make the sound ooh and get a feel for that, right? You already know that one. That's from moon. You know the word moon? <laughs> moon. The only, only the United States have ever been to the moon. What do you think about that, Great Britain? Ooh. And then you say E, but with your lips in the shape of the ooh. So you're going like this and you say E, right? E, but put your lips like this. If you're doing it right now, and I think you are, then you are now making the proper sound for umlaut, U, which is technically called U. Its name is U, and that's the sound you're making. E. <laughs> Perfect. If you can do the same thing with O, right? So O, O, and make that, try and make the E sound like that. Uh, that's uh, <laughs> möchte. It's a very important word. Möchte is I would like. Would like is möchte. Uh, möchte, möchte. Um, and so A is kind of the hardest one in a way because it's the easiest one. It's so similar to the E sound you already know. Hätte, hätte, Fahrradkette. Hätte, hä. Hey, pretty dang similar to E. Kete. Kete is chain. Farad is bike. Kete. Ke, kete. Compared to hete. That's so similar. It's really very similar. Um, no one will really notice if you pretty much pronounce it just like an E for a while. Give yourself a break. Focus on U and U. Um, <laughs> oh, I... I I'm just thinking of something I said wrong for a really long time because I didn't really notice the difference. Oh, the number 12. Um, I just pretty much used E and I just said zwölf, zwölf. Like for me, that, for like a year, that was close enough. Um, that's the number for 12, zwölf. Actually, no, zwölf, sorry. <laughs> I just gave you the wrong one. But that's, I was saying it wrong. I was saying zwölf for a long time because I just couldn't really hear the difference. But it's an U, uh, zwölf, zwölf. Yeah, that took me, <laughs> it took me a little while to catch on to that one. Um, you don't have to have everything perfect, man. You don't have to have anything perfect. You just got to work at it, man. Just keep putting time in. Just keep putting time in. This is a great book because you got these, um, you got these work, work sections at the back of each chapter. I did every one of these. Um, oh, that's pretty cool. Oh, it gives you, um, this is a, a practice of daddy das. That's funny. So this is, is this chapter one? No, this can't be chapter one. Oh yeah, okay, it's second chapter. So next chapter, we're going to talk about gender. Uh, and gender is probably like the biggest grammatical challenge for probably English speakers anyway. I guess, actually, it could be for... Spanish too, although they have gender, it's not like they match. They're totally different than in German. So it's one of the the biggest technical challenges you have to overcome in German, gender, because there are three genders. And um, to be honest, it's one of the most satisfying things to get down. Although it's something you have to really want. You have to want it for yourself. But I have a lot of tips on that too, actually, because because I did really want it. I really wanted to get the genders right. And um, I took it upon myself to develop my own techniques and training on on how to get the genders really, really down. Because there's no like app for that. They don't do that in any courses. And um, 
there are no real resources on that. But what I did was I just would write a, um, like I would take a, an index card and write on the back DAS, right? And then I would have like six words on the other side of the index card and all of them would be DAS. So DAS is neutral. And then I would look at the card and I would have all six. And so that I would have a relationship between all those words. And then that helped me to really learn them a lot faster because I would say, all right, I already know um, it's DAS Auto. And so I see on here we have Obst as well. Obst must also be DAS. So I read through them all and I'm like, I, if I know one of them, then I know all of them. And then I instantly continuously associate that. So it worked pretty good. Um, yeah, anyway, <laughs> that's next video, isn't it? But uh, yeah, so as important as the genders are, the pronunciation is really the biggest stumbling block by far. So this is the first video, first chapter in the book. Again, Easy German Step by Step by Ed Swick. And I'm going to go through this book because I've just, I want to get this all off my chest, man. <laughs> I, I learned, I learned a lot in the last five years. So this was, when, when was, when did I buy this? I should have written the date in here or something. It was uh, July 2016 and now it's February 2021. So that's five years almost. Yeah, I mean, I can tell you what, man. I might not be the perfect German teacher. My wife is the perfect German teacher, but I am better than your high school German teacher. I can guarantee you that. <laughs> See you next time. This is real talk.